back, Ron here once again. Just wanted to do a quick video on the chart setup. Uh, I'm just gonna go over how I have my chart set up in a future video. And in some of my videos, you've already seen how I use certain things like the pivots uh, to take advantage and uh, have better execution as far as when to get in, when to get out, uh, and, and how I make my decisions. So I'm just gonna cover the main charts um, that I use for uh, my trading. And then I'm gonna go over the flex grid. Uh, so this is going to be a so one monitor setup uh, that you can use. And then what you would need to do to just set up a separate monitor uh, would be to just detach uh, the charts and I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set up one chart here with everything that I like to see personally. Uh, you can take what you like from here. Uh, obviously you don't have to do what I do. I always recommend that you get comfortable with the indicators that you like. Uh, but it should give you a brief overview <clears throat> into what you need to, how you can set up your, your studies uh, if you're not familiar with uh, walking around or, or guiding yourself around uh, the Thinkorswim platform. So obviously studies are over here. Under studies, you can do a quick study or add study. So when you do quick study, it'll remove anything that's already there. Add study would just add it to anything that's already there. So the first one I'm going to add, I'm just going to go under persons, uh, under license studies. And I'm going to add the pivots, which I like to use, which are person's pivots. All right. <clears throat> Second thing I'm going to do is add a volume study, a user-defined study. I'm going to share these. I'm going to share the workspace. And I'm going to share these, um, these indicators that don't come naturally with, uh, with uh, the Thinkorswim platform so that you guys can add them, okay? So I named it volume bars, and it's basically sell versus uh, buy. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Just make sure that you do rename them uh, so that uh, you can find it easily, okay? All right, so that's what this looks like. All right, and then the next study I'm going to add is going to be... Uh -uh. I'm going to add two simple moving averages, a 50 and a 200. Here we go. All right, so both of those are added. I'm gonna go ahead and edit them in a little bit. And then the last two are gonna be RSI. Let me just search under R's. It'll be an RSI and Connor's RSI, which I'll share with you guys as well. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and edit these. I'm going to click on this uh, other bleaker next to the uh, chart settings. So we'll edit that first, and then we'll edit the volume. So I'm going to go ahead and change these moving averages to a 50. And we only need to do this once, and then we can just apply it across all the other charts as necessary. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I just made a mistake there. I'm going to color this one white and then I'm going to change this one to a 200 and I'm going to color it red. Just the colors that I like to see on the charts, okay? All right, person's pivots, I'm going to leave everything as is. Uh, I only want to, oh, actually the only thing I want to see is today. Uh, but if you want to study it, I highly recommend you put no and then go back so that you can see how the symbols, the stocks, everything reacts uh, around these pivots so that you know how to use it and better understand it, okay? If you want to activate any other of the other pivots, you can just activate them here uh, as by clicking show plot. There are more lines. I only use the three primary ones, uh, which is the SS, RR, and the PP, okay? Everything else is just extra for me. I don't like to use them. I don't need them, um, so whatever. All right, volume bars. This one is fine. Uh, for the bigger charts like these ones, uh, I do want to see the green and the red, so I will keep those there. <clears throat> Connor's RSI, I'm going to overlay over the RSI, and I'm also going to change the regular RSI to a four period. Okay. Apply. I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to make these volume bars here disappear. All right, so our volume is on the overlap is checked off. 
so it'll overlap there. If you don't want it to show up here, you can check it off and it'll come out here. Uh, and then you can drag this indicator over the volume. And basically what it'll do is um, just overlay where the volume is. It'll be on top of the volume. Uh, and I'll show you guys in a little second here what that looks like. But I'm going to make the volume bars here disappear. So I'm going to click on the preset colors on their appearance. Preset color. More. I'm going to go to RGB and I'm going to type in 1B, 1B, 1B. I don't make the bars disappear altogether. And then if for some reason you guys have the left axis enabled, which is basically this column here on the right, but on the left, but it's useless because there's nothing there. Uh, you can just go ahead and uncheck this right here to make that disappear because it is kind of annoying. <clears throat> Apply. You see the volume bars have disappeared. Um, alternatively, if you want this up top here, which I'll show you how to do in a second on the next one, uh, it is nicer sometimes to have it up here. Um, and I'll show you guys what that looks like here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this study set. So save study set. <clears throat> as chart set one. Save. I'm going to go ahead and load study set here. Chart set one. Okay. And then all I have to do here, uh, I can save the style as well. So save style. Let's call it chart set one. Save. And then we're going to load the style here. Load style. Now everything looks exactly the same. Okay, I'll cover on other videos how I use these indicators. Again, you don't have to use these. Uh, that's completely up to you. If you like the pivots, you can load the pivots the way I just did. The volume, I highly recommend this volume though. So I do recommend that you guys load those up. So these are the primary charts I usually use. So it'll be a 10 minute for me, uh, a 10 minute and then a 30 minute. Uh, so that I, I don't like looking at the three, the five, uh, or, or any small candle uh, charts because it's just a distraction. All the movement that's going on all day will just get you squeezed out of your position for no reason. Uh, looking at the at the tip minute, I, I find my good patterns to get into, and I enter my position on those patterns. And the 30 minutes just, just keeps me in the position a little bit longer. Uh, and also, if you get a nice pattern like this here, it confirms that, hey, it's time to get out. So... Uh, I, I play these two charts primarily, and obviously I review the daily. So you can also set the same style, same style, and the same uh, indicators on the, your daily chart, so you can review those as well. And then the next thing you want to set up is your market internals, things that you want to keep an eye on throughout the day. Uh, some of the things that I keep an eye on are the tick, dollar sign tick, and the only thing you want to draw on this one is a line at the 500. And the minus 500, you can do one at the zero if you like as well. Um, and then the only indicator I add to this one is a five period moving average. So let's go ahead and add that over here. Just change that to a five. And what that helps me do is uh, see how it's trending for the day. So that's why I add that period. I want to see if it's below zero, if it's above zero, are we choppy today, whatever. Um, that's why I add that. So I want to see what the ticket is doing. I especially want to see where it opens. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it. The next thing we want to do is load these uh, charts. I'm going to add one more here, customize grid. So I want six charts. All right, uncheck customize grid. And then I'm just going to load the same. Uh, so I'm going to load the same study set, same style. Okay, and then I'm only the only thing I'm going to change is uh, how this is laid out because obviously I don't want it the same way. I do want it a little bit different, so I'm going to go ahead and edit studies, and I'm going to move the volume up. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of uh, the green bars and the red bars. So I'm going to go ahead and remove show plot under sell volume. I'm going to remove uh, show bars under buy volume regular volume and volume average. I, I don't want to see any of this. Okay. All I want to do is see the numbers up top because this is just going to give me a quick indication on how the market is doing overall. Uh, so that's what I want to see here. 
uh, same 50th period, same person's pivots. I still want to see that, and I still want to see my RSI. You can just do the four period RSI on this one, honestly. Um, this one right here, uh, but you can do both. Either one is fine, but it's a little cleaner with just the four period. Um, but you know, I'm testing it out. I like the way it is, it is because it just gives me the same clear signals that I like to see. But again, everybody's different. Just get used to what you like. Remove the noise. If it's noise for you, just get rid of it. All right, so this is what this looks like. And obviously these are small and using it on the same screen, obviously it's just gonna cramp things in. Uh, so that's the reason why if you have multiple monitors, it'd be great to detach this and you can detach it by selecting here, detach and putting it on a separate monitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. Detach, it just opens things up a little bit more to have it uh, not squeezed down by the bars up top and all the tabs that are part of the platform. Uh, so if you have Windows 10 or a Mac and you can just swipe left or right, uh, this is go this is going to help. So now uh, I'm going to make the bars, uh, the volume bars a little visible because uh, I do kind of kind of want to see a little bit of them uh, just in case uh, something is changing. I like to kind of see it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 25 under HSD. They're still pretty uh, transparent, but I want to kind of see a little bit. Hey, volume is changing. So like you see this candle here, I know it's not that visible, um, but I kind of want to see this, that, oh, sell, sell. And, and you would have seen this as, as the market was closing, that this was sliding up red. Uh, you would have seen this uh, with, with numbers and, and the color here, but it's nice to see that the bar is significantly higher than all the bars before it. Uh, which gives me, hey, if I'm in, if I'm in puts, this is a good sign for my position, um, because the bar going into the close was significant, uh, and it was a significant sell volume coming in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna save this as study set two or chart set two, and I'm gonna save the style as chart set two as well. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead here and add. Okay, another market. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load study set. Chart set two. I'm gonna go ahead and load style. Chart set two. There you go. So once again, just repeat the process on all of them. And all right, you can zoom in, adjust, you can adjust on the side, you can adjust on the bottom on the time frame and drag and drop. So basically just drag it up, drag it down. Uh, so you can see the charts exactly the way you want them. Okay. Put the symbols that you like to see. So whether that is the cues, uh, the E minis, the Dow minis, or uh, however you like to see, whatever markets you like to see, uh, just set them up uh, the way. But definitely, you should be keeping an eye on the markets because uh, you want to know what the market is doing overall, not just the stock that you're trading. Okay. And then the last thing I like to watch here is the VIX. And the VIX, I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much load same study set. On the VIX uh, and the S&P, SPX, for example, you're never going to see the volume, so it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't show you volume, um, even though people do trade it. Um, it doesn't show the volume, so can't uh, do anything about it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And then uh, you can go ahead and save your workspace. Where did my... Uh, here we go. So let's say you put these next to each other. If you have a Mac or Windows 10... Uh, you can go ahead and save your workspace. Uh, so if you do have them all on the same on this screen here, make sure that it's set up here first. 
um, before you save the workspace so that it all looks the same. Otherwise, it'll be saved on that separate screen over there. Um, so just make sure you have you do this in here first. Should have done that for you guys here first so that you don't get confused. Uh, but uh, yeah, just make sure everything is the way you want it before you save the workspace. Uh, so now we have our charts here. I have the 10 and the 30 minute. And obviously you can just change this to a uh, one day or daily, or you can detach this as well, have it on a separate monitor, and then leave this as the daily, which is what I do, because I'm not looking at the daily on a regular basis. I just kind of kind of come take a look at it, and then I go about my trades for the day, etc. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this workspace for you guys. I'm gonna save workspace. All right, chart setup space one. I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna go ahead and share this with you guys. And click on this setup tab here on the gear icon over here and you're just going to click on open shared item and then here you're going to go ahead and paste the link here for the uh, shared workspace before you uh, open this one I highly recommend that you load the volume one and the Connors RSI one first so that when you load the workspace everything loads correctly otherwise you're going to have to add those yourself uh, so again setup open shared item go ahead and load the uh, volume and then go ahead and load Connors RSI if you choose to use it and then go ahead and load the workspace uh, and the workspace is going to appear under here you're going to click setup and you're going to select workspace chart setup space one make sure that you rename it uh, to whatever space you want it's going to save uh, from Ramirez or something uh, just rename it so that you can find it or you'll see it here okay uh, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.